What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Campus Cuts, a multi a multicultural, intergenerational podcast. Um, here, where I get a chance to talk to entrepreneurs, athletes, community members of all walks of life to chop it up in the virtual barbershop. Today, I got a special guest. I got a man of God. I got a servant leader. I have somebody that is a communicator who utilizes his platform and his voice to inspire and empower everyone around him. Um, I looked up to this brother. He is uh, he is what the definition of more than an athlete, not being defined by being the boxes that the world would try to place him, but him being outside of the box by just how he carries himself. Um, I'm super glad and I'm super honored to be able to have the special guest, um, a man of God, my guy, BJ Hansbard. What's up, bro? What's up? Welcome to the show, bro. Man, what's going on, bro, man? First and foremost, man, definitely appreciate you, man. Honored to be able to be on here with you, man. And just, just excited to to see the great things you're doing and what you've already accomplished, man. So it's definitely an honor. Yeah, grateful, grateful, bro. Um, so for anybody that's not uh, anybody that's new to the show, this is where I get a chance to be able to talk about people who are moving and shaking, especially um, from a Gen Z perspective, because it's very important for us for our voices to be on here. So again, thank you. Now, my first question, man, is um, I introduce yourself a little bit, but I can only do such a good job. I want you to introduce yourself. What is your name, your year, your major? And after that, we'll dive in. Yeah, man. Well, first and foremost, my name is Byron Hanspar Jr. A lot of people call me BJ Hanspar from uh from Dallas, Texas. Went to school at Soto High School. Graduate there at eight. Was a class a historian and class chaplain. Very blessed and humbled to be able to come to Baylor University to pursue a degree within corporate communications. I graduate and I plan on pursuing a master's degree with sports administration. Looking into athletic directing, man. Uh, so grateful for the opportunity to be here, man. It's, it's been an honor to run into some great people, uh, and even such as yourself, man. It's, it's, it's been an honor, brother. Of course, bro. Man, like, yeah, the corporate communication coming tight, bro. You a communicator, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> oh, no, bro, that's how it is, man. Man, so um, I want you to talk about your journey, bro. Um, I think it's super, it's dope that we cross paths. Um, I actually really came across your stuff, of course, just like, you know, nowadays over the yep. internet. I saw you doing your speaking stuff. Um, and of course, you know, me being a speaker as well. Um, I was just like, you you remind me of a mix of um, Devon Franklin and Eric Thomas. Like, of course, the Eric Thomas is where it's like, okay, the football, whatever, the athletic, but of course, the way that you're continuing to allow sprinkling God, not even sprinkling, proclaiming your faith as it continues to lead as you're speaking, bro. So talk yeah. about your early start of how did you know that this was your gift and just talk about your journey, man. Well, man, first and foremost, man, I, I have to say this, man, it's funny how God works, man. I call it divine adventure because just as much as you say you ran across me and I remind you of D Franklin. See, man, I ran across your page. Man, it's more people out here that are using that home and not only just not only just thinking about themselves, but they're thinking about planting seeds in our generation. That's what's needed, man. A lot of people feel like it's our own. This life is not our own, man. We're not meant to have this life. You, what I can do, what I can do, oh, man, use in position to help other people, to help groom and help, her, help allow this generation. But yeah, man, uh, I, I have to say, when when I was in all of my grade school, middle school, man, I would always get in trouble for talking too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> they would call my parents all the time. But sometimes my pops on speed dial, moms in the district, dad working in the district, had some had a had two aunts in the district, and brother. Every time something went down. Yeah, BJ Han, he's up here. And it's like, come on, man. I can't get a break. It wasn't that I was a bad kid, man. It, it wasn't nothing like that, man. It was just me always wanting to talk or try to help out, you know, say things. Just, you know, be all out. 
And now I'm positioned in a place that I used to get in trouble for talking too much, and now I'm getting paid for talking too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I tell you, man, I God just continued to, to fill me up, man. And, and I have to say this, man, because a lot of people think that we just fall in this place. And, and you know, I'm not trying to make this a sermon, but brother, we didn't choose God. God chose us. And when people realize that and people sense the spirit of God come upon them, then I think a lot of this run trying to run astray and lead here and lead there without God was um finished. Because now it's like, okay, like, okay, my life, I can't run. Like God has this hand on but man, when I realize, you know what, God has called me to stand out. He hasn't called me to fit in. He hasn't called me to run with the crowd. He's called me to stand out. And when I realize that I can do the talk and when I listen and not only listen and i don't i don't take any any credit for this at all but people move by the story people are impacted by who whether that be spirit or the words of wisdom, guidance whatever and i see people continue to be transformed and brother i don't know as much i need to know man i've only been gifted what god has given me still diving in and digging in even deeper man so the path definitely being in trouble and not shutting up, talking, but the Lord used the bitter mouth that I had and turned me. And now things are coming to coming to this fruition, man. So it's right. been a, it's been a hell of a journey for sure, man. Definitely. Bro, I like how you said because again, I say it in my own testimony as well. The bitter mouth, right? Like, because of course, when you you when you know that how to communicate. Like there's two ways. I, I just think about the story of, of of Joseph, right? Joseph and the coat. Man, he had a mouth. He had a mouthpiece, and he loved. Lo oh, but he was called a manipulator. He knew knew he knew how to coerce his brothers, his uh -huh. dad, and everything. In the same way of like, all right, cool, all right. And after that, his brothers sell him because he wouldn't shut up, and he was the yeah. favorite. And yeah. after that, going to Pharaoh, getting thrown to jail. Then after that, going okay, here are the dreams. And after that, now being like elevated at the top because he used his gift of speak, speaking and communicating, and as long as and as well as dreaming, bro. Yeah. And it's so crazy to see like the transformation of like how both of us. I mean, I don't know your story completely, but it, like you being transparent in that moment, like yeah, man, like I had it. And I used it incorrectly, whether it's me in trouble in school, not showing up to now, like people are willing to pay for your gift, but most yep. importantly, you see how God has continued to transform because I saw your clip of the, the, of your clip of you speaking at Juneteenth. And I'm just like, bro, this is so like, Bela has never done anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's big, bro. How did that feel? Man, this is definitely an opportunity that I, take lightly at all man it was crazy bro because i was actually supposed to be in person for the juneteenth pageant scholarship event but i was actually doing it i won't call it a mission trip called the fsi the face and it's where we really groom and allow mentors put in place with not only children from the waco area but children from around the area you know we went out to hamilton uh texas probably about an hour and 12 minutes here and man we really just had the chance to be able those kids, man. I, I ran into you one day on the campus when we were running around and had everything going. Man. I'm just like, hey, tonight I ain't forgot about you. Man. Crazy, hectic, all over the place. But man, to be granted that opportunity, man, I don't take it lightly. Like a lot of people see all oh, DJ talking, he's PJ being speak. Like I don't take those things lightly, man. Because every time I open up my mouth, every time I proclaim something, man, it's it's my brand. Like that's my stamp. And if I'm not representing myself, my father, my in the best way possible i'm doing myself i'm disowning myself i'm discrediting myself from everything that i potentially have you know so to have the opportunity to have to to be able to speak and be the keynote speaker for that event man i man i, I took it all in and then when when it was time to go ahead and execute what needed to be done man i had to let it all out and when i was able to see the final product man i i was happy about it. you know and it's it's different when you're happy about the work put out rather than anybody else because you could care less about what anybody else has to say if you're happy with it if you're content with it man you can continue to move forward with the gift that you have you can continue to do it with power with authority with that courageous spirit that you have in mind man it, it definitely was amazing. that's good that's awesome that's awesome and to now to actually probe into that question man is um <laughs> that point that you said like being content because yep. it's hard like you know 
whether you're an artist, you know, study theater or whatever, or a speaker or something like that, or, or like even as an athlete too, right? You know, it's like you are graded or you are judged by your performance. Mm. And it's not like we don't want to be, it's not that we want to be like performance driven or anything like that, but it's like, it's that tension of, yeah, I did a great job. I think I did well. But other people will be like, no, bro, you were trash or whatever, whatever. Like, yeah. how, like, tell me about that first experience of you overcoming that I don't need to your approval anymore, especially yeah. when it comes to your grip. <laughs> I say you just heard right out. Right out. I have to be careful here tonight because I know we got more questions. So I don't, I don't want to keep jumping too far, man. But one thing, and and this is kind of tying into the question that we have of what would you tell your younger self. So I'll touch a little bit on it and I'll just try to be. So one thing that I realized man, that we go out into the world and we see all the things that we see, man, people proclaim success in different ways. People think, man, I got to have all the cars, all the money. I got to have all the ladies off. Got to own every bar, every club, every spot. And then the and in my words, in my terms, man, this is how I this in my own ways, man. When I'm loved, when I wake up in the morning and do the things that I love to do, when I not only love family, but I'm like the household that I'm in, whether I'm a husband, whether I'm a whether I'm a fiance, whatever the case is, that is success. When I can go out and be impactful and be to the community around me, when I don't use my home, but I'm being put planted in position less of the people so once i came to realize man it doesn't matter what anybody has to say because at the end of the day man and let's just be real people gonna hate on you one way or another when you do what when you do what people want you to do they still gonna have something to say when you do what people don't want you to do they still gonna have something to say so at the end of the day i just say hey let's just do it like this whatever bj feels that the lord has placed in my heart to continue to execute I'm going to do that, and I'm not going to be fearful. I'm not going to be timid. I'm not going to have any doubt in mind, even though at times those things come. But I'm going to walk through this thing with arm on my back because I am equipped. I am enough. I am beautifully yeah, yeah, yeah. and wonderfully made. And once I continue to keep those things written in my mind, I continue to – and this is how the mind works, man. Once I begin to have something on my mind, then it festers with my heart. And then when I mm -hmm. have something festering with I have a driving force to push it out. So until that thing really just gets in my mind and then it transfers to my heart, I will never have a true action into executing it properly. So right. when I think about the things that I have in my mind, I can't have just any type of thing in my mind. I have to have the correct things that I'm rooted in, that I'm found that my foundations are rooted in. Because if I don't, I'm going to be straying off. I'm going to be wavy. I'm going to be all over the place because my foundation is not solid and strong. So when I right. think even more, man, the devil is after the mind. Once the devil can corrupt your mind, he has you. He has Once you. It's done. Tricks and toss with your mind. Then he say, oh, I can lure this in. Oh, oh I can play this trick. Oh, I, I can have him think this thing when it's something else. It's something else. When I understand wow. the is to steal, kill, and to destroy, I have to realize, man, I have to be sure my mind is on correctly. So when I have things in my mind, then it festers into my heart. My driving force action doesn't have to come back to me, boy, but it can go out. It can plant seeds. But the Lord is going to continue to water those seeds and drain the increase. So, man, right. think about approval, man. I, I don't care anything, about it, to be honest with you. Because at the end of the day, like I said, the Lord gives the assignment. And I want to be sure that I am in line with the assignment the Lord has given me. I yeah. want to have a line for the assignment. Yeah, that that's awesome. Chip Baker, and he gave me that. He said, man, I call it being in alignment for the assignment, man. Alignment for the assignment, bro. Oh, bro. Oh, you're taking us to church, bro. I had to write that down, Doc. I had to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, that that is good. Be in alignment, in assignment, bro. And you can tell. Like, I, I was having a conversation with a friend the other day, and one of the key like takeaways that she told me, bro, was she went down to a mission trip down, I think, in um, what Guatemala or Costa Rica or something. Uh, and she mentioned she met this lady, and this lady said, 
um, I can see, I can see the life in your eyes. Mm-hmm. I've seen so many people, and you can really see the light in people's eyes, right? Yeah. And in this world, when the enemy takes over the mind, bro, the light in people's eyes are gone. Yeah. And like, and and it's like. I'm not scared of anything, right? I mean, because we have no reason to be scared or anything. But I think one of the things that that personally drives me is to hopefully make sure I don't lose the life in my eyes, but now, but most importantly, bring the light in other people's eyes too. Like I can see the bro, the, the light is evident, and the life is evident in your eyes, bro. And it's amazing because whenever I see you, bro, I'm like, yes, <laughs> my guy, BJ, bro. Like bro. I'm like, bro, love. And now, and and it's like. It feels like there's a responsibility in order to hopefully in, do and give it, whether it's a one second interaction, three second, a 10 second interaction, or maybe like a lifelong, lifelong impact. Because it's so true, because like our energies, like the way that we continue to interact with our souls and our spirits, like if you are radiating positive mindset, positive energy to another person, that's contagious. Same yeah. with the negative as well. Yeah. I don't know. What are your thoughts, bro? Man, you you said a big word, man. You said responsibility. Man. A lot of times, the response of as, as leaders, as advocators, as communicators, as being sons, as being father figures, whatever the case may be, it's a responsibility that we must embrace. At times, you run from responsibilities and to drift them off and push them on to something else. And in and then the seed that we plant, it becomes, it it it, it becomes rooted and it turmoil on it because the responsibility that we have to whatever it is is to be sure that we have guidance, is to be sure we're leading people on the right pathway, that we're straight, that we're loving people, that we're spreading the love, spreading the joy that in our hearts. Then you said energy, and I think energy is everything, bro. Like, want to start a conversation with somebody man i look at their body language man i look at their posture and it's it's funny that we're talking about it man i i, I worked with a lady named Lawrence bulgar at marlin isd and and we we really she she gave me the freedom to be able to make up whatever it is that i wanted to put whatever was laid on my share with the children and we talked about confidence one thing that is so significant when we talked about confidence is that I wanted the children to have a primary example of what confidence it is. So when they act out in confidence, it's not it doesn't have to come back. When they act out being it doesn't have to come back. But when they act out all the that they need to do in the proper way, it doesn't come back, oh man, well, well that's being confident. No, that's not being confident. This is what confidence is. This is how you can position yourself in the right way. Have the correct posture. Like I told Children. Posture is everything. Hand mm-hmm. up, eyes up, chest up. I can do it. And when we walk with that authority, when we walk with that power, man, we begin to step on demons and enemies and obstacles. We can even naturally see right by having the correct posture. Because I guarantee you, when the enemy sees our posture begin to poke and our head begin to down, oh, he, oh, mm-hmm. let me run over there. Let me get with him. Because we look defeated. But once we continue, like I told my children, put your head up, lift your eyes up, hold your chest up. You can do it. That is comfortable. So right. When we talk about energy, man, I look at posture and I look at people's position. I look at people, okay, hey, how's he carrying this? How's she carrying this when adversity strikes? How do they something that when they get back, like what goes on, man? So, man, that's, that's just my my. Because, you know, we see it in so many different facets, whether that be people on the media, whether that be sports, whether that be broadcasters, whatever it is, we see those things. Right. And it's up to us as people that want to see this generation shifted in the correct way. Plant those, to bring, plant those, but to bring other people along with us. Because that's what we miss that time, man. We all that. Let me just, just do do this by myself. And if they follow, they follow. If they don't, they oh, we need to strategically lead by example. Mm-hmm. Everybody along with them, and then right. when we bring people along with us. Then they learn it and they learn the process. I can do this. Let me bring somebody up, and then we be- begin to have the ripple. Then we begin to have the dumb. 
Next thing you know, everyone is walking up boldly, being courageous, having confidence, upholding and embracing their responsibilities and fixing their energy, man. So that's my opinion on that. Right, bro, that's so good, man. Like all of that is so good. And you really, I love, and I, I think that's gonna be one of the topics I really want people to take away from this is the fact that you are always talking about planting the seeds for the next generation and yeah. making them aware. Um, and you always go back to talking about the children, man. What, like, what drives you in order, like, for you to mentor the young kids? Like, like, how did you get, like, because, of course, somebody in your stature, good looking, athletic, you know, whatever, doing all this stuff, you could easily be like, man, you guys can come to me. But now, nah, bro, you literally flip the script and I'm like, I want to continue to serve the kids. Like, where, and, and I want to mentor. Where did that drive come from, man? Man, so I, I'm, I'll try to be brief with this, man, because it, it can it can be a long story. And if you don't know tonight, man, I I took the I took a class that was public speaking. And one thing that I've been trying to do is to limit my my talking with every question. So I try to talk and you know a minute and a half, two minutes, and not go over that. So work, I'm I'm still I'm still working on that. So I appreciate you working with me on that. But man, of course, bro, passion that I've had with, with being a servant, man, it's it's always started with service. And, and that was just the realization knowing that, man, like, this life isn't my own. You know, like, I'm being placed, I'm being positioned to help other people, to bless other people. You know, and the Bible talks about that, that giving it should be given unto you, good measures pressed down, taken together, running over. Now, the thing is, a lot of people think that's just financially. Don't limit God and say, you know, hey, God said if I give, it should be given to me. So all I'm going to do is give money and that's it. No, 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 no. That, that's that's not the word. The Bible says to give and it shall be given. I'm mm -hmm. not going to limit God to just finances because money, sure, money is good, but I need my mind. I want to be set emotionally. I want to be set mentally, holistically. So I, I not only want the Lord to overflow on me just financially, but I want the Lord to overflow on me with intelligence, with intellect. I want the Lord to overflow on me holistically, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, in all ways that when someone needs something, I already know that I'm equipped to step in and to help someone, to lead someone, to guide someone. So, man, I want to give a quick story, bro. I was uh, in high school, my senior year, we were able to do this, this program called PALS, called Pearson Leadership. And, man, I started off in... With every school that I went to, we went to elementary schools and we went to middle schools. Excuse me. I started off every school I went to with one or two young men. And I ended almost every school I had with about three, four or five young men. But it was this one particular place that I was at. It's called East Middle School. I started off at East Middle School with one young man. I ended the year with 15 young men that I was able to help pour into their life, guide and lead them. And man, it was so significant to me because when I walked into East Middle School, they would say, hey B, here's the key. Take the boys into the room, you know, have at it, do whatever you all need to do. When you finish, go ahead, lock the door back, bring us back the key. It got to the point to not only did the young men understand and realize, man, like this is something that's needed. Like I appreciate you pouring into me. Because I realized that the young men that I was with, man, some of them didn't have their fathers in their life. Some of them were going through trials and tribulations that no one would understand. No one wanted to hear. No one wanted to listen. No one wanted to be an advocate for, you know what, I understand you, my brother. And I emphasize, I empathize with you, my brother. But the moment that we had with me just kind of overseeing how we talked, how we dealt with things, man, it was a it was a light that just blew up in my face and said, B. This is your calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Public engage, public relations, community engagement. That's your calling. Because it takes a specific person to be able to complete a task. Everybody can't be in a position of service because everyone soon begins to, their mind is, is in disarray. Like, oh, man, I'm only in this position. I can make this much money. No, no, no. It's not always about the money. Because I've been in plenty of positions to where I've helped people and given them my last dime, people that I know won't ever be able to pay me back. And it right.
thing of, oh, well, you got it now. Where is that? No, no, no. That's at the kindness out of my heart. So when I mm -hmm. go and think about mentorship, man, I think about where I was as a young child. And I was blessed to be able to have both of my parents in the household, a loving father, a loving mother, to be able to guide and lead me. But being the oldest, sometimes it can get tricky because it's like, okay, who else can I talk to rather than my old man? Like, right, you know, right. I, I, I am the older sibling. So it's like, okay, be like, you kind of got to listen to what dad say and, and hear what he's saying. And then you kind of got to go figure it out a little bit. Right. Because yep. I want to share that wisdom and knowledge that I went through as a youngster that help some of these cats out here understand, hey, man, I ain't got to go through A, B, and C because B, me and B talked about that. Like, like B gave me his example of him going through a storm and what he did wrong. And if he could have changed something or nipped something in the bud, this is what he would have done. So, man, when I think about it, man, I think about the position that I'm in, man. I think about, you know what? The Lord has given me this platform. And I can either do one or two things. I can attempt to exalt myself or I can exalt mm -hmm. myself. the Lord. Mm. Myself, the Lord is going to humble me. And one thing that I don't want to do and time, bro, I know T time B. I know you. I know you feel me when I say this. I don't want the Lord to humble me, because how will I get humble? I don't know. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord could strip me from everything. He could take everything away from me. I don't want that. I want to be able mm -hmm. to humble myself. I want to check myself. I want to say, you know what, B, you shouldn't have done that. Go correct that. You know what, B, instead of doing this, let's do this. Because last time we tried this, last time we said this, we ended up in this position. So, man, I think right. it's all about self-assessment, man. And I've been in the position to realize, man, I have to self-assess myself because I'm getting to the age and I'm getting to the point where, hey, everyone doesn't have to call out your mistakes every time when you're aware right. and disciplined enough to say, you know what? That's not how I raised. You know what? That's not what I should have done. I should I need to correct myself. I need to go correct this, whether it be with a person, whether it be a thing that we're doing, whether it be not necessarily giving the best example and correcting that example. Man, it always goes back to self-assessment. So when I think about mentorship and when I think about being in the correct position to plant those seeds into the generation before us and even the generation behind us, the generations that are about to come, even generations that are ahead of us, man, I want to plant those seeds that people can pick up and utilize and say, you know what? I'm not only called, but I'm chosen. I'm not only told, I do have a purpose. I not only have a purpose, but I am equipped. And I'm not only equipped, but I'm enough. And mm -hmm. we really continue to have those things be repetitive in our minds. And we send those out to people around us, man. It's contagious. It's yeah, bro. It's that energy that we talk about. Because t time, bro, we can't sit here and we can't sit here and you talk about something negative. I'm talking about all this positivity. And it's just like, man, it's just like we're doing this. But, man, right. we got all this positive energy and all of this energy and all of this energy. Man, what? We'll be we'll be two bright suns out here, man. Bro, right? It's kind of like the spirit bomb from Dragon Ball Z, bro. <laughs> going all going up all over the place, man. So, man, that's 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 my input on that, brother. Bro, that that is so good, man. Like, there's a lot of gems, and I love because I mean, like, I and I think that's why we resonated and we clicked because you're like I could tell that you're that you're the eldest. I'm the eldest as well, right? And it's like, it's just like this different energy when you know it's the older children. And especially like now, like you're at an age like where everybody's looking to you and you're like, who can I talk to? Like, I, I, I messed up. Like, I, I, I need to, I like, yes, besides my family, I need somebody to help me, like, help me, like, hey, man, I have a mentor for, okay, for, for business. Oh, I have a mentor for, like, you know, okay, theater. Oh, I have a mentor for, for, for coach or anything like that. People yeah. that can specifically, like, speak life into you, but also objectively and effectively help correct you, but most importantly, allow you for the room for you to grow and correct yourself. Like you yeah. saying the fact, like, we have to have that self-awareness and that self, um, that self-assessment, that trait. And it's so, it's really interesting to notice that, you know, that trait is kind of going away now, right? Yeah. Especially with, you know, with a little bit of cancel culture and also that people thinking, again, the perception of us, like of us posting a 60 second clip, a photo where like it looks over and whatever, and people just put this in, in this box 
And we're like, no, like we're more than the box. Like us as children of God and people who have been created to do more and to live more like in our being, because we're, we're multifaceted, we're multidimensional, we're complex, we're, we're our children and people with thoughts and feelings and emotions. And, and uh, we need to be able to have the ability to effectively love, but also correct and, and, and help move and build that next generation forward. And also pay respects to the back, man. So you hit the nail on the head, bro. Like that was some good stuff, boy. Man, brother, like I said, man, and and it's crazy that you say that, man. We we are in the position as as being the eldest man that we have to leave behind that legacy for our young brothers. We 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 have the responsibility to do because the thing is, if we have little brothers and, and young siblings. They don't look up to us in some way, form, or fashion. Then we did ourselves a disservice. It should always be, you know what? Hey, I can do this because my big brother did it. And since I have the one who did it, my big brother in my life, he going to teach me the ropes. He going to show me the past. He going to show me the mistakes that he made. But not only the mistakes that he made, he's going to show me the roadmap. Hey, follow these steps right here. Be be diligent in this. Have the correct habits. Have the, the proper discipline put into place. Don't worry about all the distractions and things around you. Let your distractions starve and feed your destiny. Move forward in the proper way that you're not worried about what the media has to say, that you're not worried about what this girl has to say or that woman. I don't know. Because we're, we're the only... And I, I I'm, talked about this yesterday, man. As children of God, man, we don't have to act for love. We need to act in the way of we're already loved. In the mm -hmm, form of, hey, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm acting out of love. I'm not acting for love. I'm acting out of love. And it, it and you can tell at times for people that feel like they're not loved because they they act out, they do crazy things. Of course, I'm not I'm not saying, you know, hey, we don't act out or we don't have moments and things like that. But at times right. it's like, man, like, what's really going on? And when people realize, man, you are loved. You you don't you don't have to go out here and try to find love or seek for love. You are love. So when we or perform for love or perform for love, ooh that ooh, ooh. man, <laughs> and that's what I say, man. And and and, it, and that's when we start talking about having the approval of others. Man, I, I gotta I gotta say this. I gotta do this. I gotta go take on this over here because so and so they gonna see it and they gonna watch it and they gonna like it and they gonna comment on. They gonna retweet. They gonna quote tweet it. And then hey man, what what, what else? What, what else is it? They gonna like it. They gonna retweet it. They gonna comment. They gonna say what they have to say and then what? It passes. They gonna it. Do it. I mean, hey, you know what? What what's what's the benefit? That's why I say, man, I, I'm not I'm not big on, you know, worrying about what everybody thinks. Oh, man, I got to impress this person or that person. I'm not acting in regards of trying to infiltrate love, man. Like, like, come love me. Like, I, I need the love. I'm not doing that, man. Yeah. I'm acting yeah, in the that's form good. of already loved. Yeah, bro. That is so good, man. That is so good. And, and man, and like, bro, oh, bro, this, oh, man, I'm just charged <laughs> up, G. <laughs> Like, oh, gosh, man, the, this is my second podcast interview of the day. Well, this is me interviewing, like interviewing, like I was just interviewed like a couple, about a couple hours ago with this amazing guest that I had on my podcast. And she's like, her name is Sandy Scarlata, like the happiness coach. And the one of the things that we like, whenever the podcast drops, people will be able to tap in and listen. It's like um, that moment where you have the switch of acting from love because you know that you're not even living life with the goal. You're living in purpose in your intention because the goal sounds like you're doing something from lack, like you need to do this in order to get from that goal. But rather that you're setting the intention, you know that it's going to come, it's going to be. And, you're, and that gives you, allow you a time to, to master your craft, to skill, to level up. And the same way of us acting from love rather than for love, is we get to master the act of human connection, humanity, being, being, seeing beyond your job, seeing beyond your title, seeing the person, you, you know Come on, top man, t Tom, man, you talking, man. You you saying a whole lot right now, man. <laughs> you saying a whole lot right now, bro. You talking, man. man. You're, you're, you're talking, brother. And, and man, you, you said, uh, you said a big word, man. You said intention. 
And man, it, it's funny, man. One thing that I've I've really been doing myself, man, is is I, I bought myself a journal, man. And I, I try to, you know, as much as I can, I try to write write in it about every day or, you know, if a thought comes to mind, you know, try to write that thought down or, you know, if I'm preparing for a speech or whatever the case is, try to write those things down, man. And, and you said intention. Man, when, when I when I think about intent, man, I think about patterns. You know, I think about how I'm well setting myself up. And I realize this, man, um, it's it's definitely anytime we talk about intentions, we're talking about patterns over potential. Mm. Uh, they can say, oh, man, like he has the potential to do this. He has the potential to be this. But his track record is nowhere long to where he said he's trying to go. I can't say I have the intention to love this young lady or to do this young lady, but I'm cheating on her. I'm, I'm slipping and cripping. I'm doing all these other different things. I, I can't say that I have the intention to be a great mentor, to be a great this, a great that, but my track record has me nowhere reading, nowhere listening, nowhere being fed myself. So when I think about intentions, man, if my intentions, if, or if my motives are going to be set on something, I have to be sure that the patterns that I'm leading up to the thing that I say I have the intention on achieving or I have the intention on moving or positioning the right way, man, I have to be sure everything lines up the correct way. Mm. I can't say, man, I really want to achieve this goal right here, but nothing along the lines of me achieving this goal is setting me up for success. It's patterns over potential. I can't say, oh, man, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. And I never find myself in a position to have a driving force in achieving those things. So I, when I think of intentions, man, I think of patterns over potential. Because mm. my patterns aren't leading up to the potential I say I have. I'm doing myself a disservice. If the patterns I have don't lead up to the things I say I want to achieve, to the things I say I want to do, to the things I want to have put into place, then I'm doing myself a disservice. But if I have a goal in mind, if I have a task in mind, if I write something down, the Bible Habakkuk 2 and 2 tells us, man, to write the vision and make it clear. When I'm writing my vision, making my vision clear, man, I have to be intentional with the steps that I'm taking. I have to be intentional with the habits that I'm creating. I have to be intentional with the discipline that I have at mind. Because if I'm not, that goal that I have written down is not going to be achieved. Mm -hmm. Because the patterns and the steps that I've taken are leading me astray. But when I say I'm writing something down, when I say I'm writing a vision down, I have to say, you know what, BJ, if you're going to make this vision come to pass, these are the steps that you're going to have to take. So, man, when you said intention, man, I flipped that page and said, you know what? Patterns over potential. Patterns over the pop, bro. Patterns, intention, and patterns over potential. Man, man, alignment for your assignment and patterns over potential, bro. If y'all not picking up the, oh my gosh, man, bro. Ooh, I cannot wait because I know, like, bro, like again, like because of where your heart is at, bro. I was having a conversation with my boy Caleb. We were talking about we're not we're not in this for 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 the short term. Yeah, of course. We know. We know. We're in this to master our crafts. We're in here for the long term. We know that we're going to get compensated for what we're worth because of the value that we bring. Yeah. We know that, okay, yes, the we're going to get paid for our talents, him being a comedian, me being a speaker, an entrepreneur, you being a speaker, you being a servant at AD. We're going to get paid because it's already, we're going to, like, guys will supply all our needs, mm -hmm. but we're more about getting the craft and skilling, the, like, the craft. Yeah. Like, you know, just like that J. Cole album. He could have been done. He could have reached it at the top. But oh, I just yeah. wanted to go to the next level. And it's in the sense, bro, like, just even seeing this, bro, I, I, I'm just getting, like, a vision of, like, bro, that's what's going to happen 20, 30, 40 years, bro. We end this for the long, bro. Oh, yeah. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, brother. And I continue to resonate on that daily, man, because at times, man, and, and I'm sure you can you can you can be able to relate to this, man. At times, man, life can be so conflicting. It can have mm -hmm. its ups and its downs, great weeks, its moments, and then you can just drop all the way down the rock bottom. Man. And and I and, and I'm always reminded, man, 
each and every day, man. I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of a woman with the issue of blood, man. And she dealt with the issue for over 12 years, man. She went to every physician possible. And then she realized someone told her she heard through the wind that the savior was passing through town. And man, one thing that's significant about that, I'm not, I'm not going to preach, man, but I got to say this, man. One thing that's significant about the woman dealing with the issue of blood is that she heard through the wind that Jesus was coming. That mean in the place that she was in, they were already talking about the savior. They were already witnessing and telling those, man, it's this man named Jesus. And he's not only the healer, he's not only the, the but he's the savior. And right. realizing Jesus is coming through town and knowing that he's all of these adjectives, the woman with the issue of blood said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I Damn. could be made whole. And brother, that just brings me back to the time where, man, she had to force, she had to push through all the crowd. She had to push through her infirmities. She had to push through every obstacle. She had to push through the negative doctor doctor's reports of what everyone was saying of her not being able to receive healing with this issue of blood. She had to push through all of that to receive her healing. And brother, I don't know if I'm talking to you or if I'm talking to someone else on, that may be attending the live and that may be listening to it. But brothers, brothers and sisters, listen, when we get that moment in life, when we feel like we're just sinking into the deep crevices of life, continue to fight, continue to move forward because there is victory behind the struggle. I guarantee you that you will win if you don't quit. But if you mm -hmm. sit there, you quit, if you throw in the towel, if you say, man, to hell with this man, it's hard. Nobody cares about me. Nobody's here wiping my tears. I'm just going to sit here. Why would, why? And, and man, I, I love this, man. Why would you sit in hell and not get out of hell? Why not get the hell out of hell? <laughs> why, why, am I, why am I gonna sit in hell and soak? Yeah, yeah. I want to get out of hell. I want to push yeah. whatever adversity, whatever controversial, whatever it is. I want to push through it because I know on the other side there's victory. So man, yeah. I'm encouraging myself. And I'm just sharing this with you. But my brother, man, when life continues to rock and shake and hit us and tries to beat us, man, we have to continue to use the armor that we have that we're already equipped with. We have to use those tools, man. We have to use the things that we've been equipped with and continue to fight and continue to press and continue to move forward. Because if we don't quit, man, I'm done. Bro. I'm done. Bro, man. That's good, bro. Like, wow. Wow, man. Like, there's y'all. If you if you just could pick up two things. POP, assignment, and your alignment, and keep going. Push through. Push through. Push through. Bro, I, I just want to say I appreciate your time, bro. And I, I want to be uh cognizant of it. And so now we're going to go into the last couple questions, man. Again, thank you for just being on the show. Um, my first question, these are more like the big legacy question, man, would be um, the first one is, what would you like to see change um, in your lifetime? Yeah. In my lifetime, uh, when I looked around the generation around and kind of got on, and it's, it's the delay of gratification, man. It really is that a lot of people, man. If I, I want to go, still, I want to go another way of going through of getting. I want to receive, and man, what I realize is process. You begin to find bar as a person, serving as an athlete. As a, Whatever the case, you find out. Where you, you begin to find out. You find out. You find out. That continue to keep you going. Out about the back. Anything that I change, society is for people to embrace the process because the process to us just a moment. Until that, that want to be. That's good, bro. That's good. 
That 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 is so good. Y'all trust the process. Just really trust it. Yeah, Every yeah. bit of the process and it's the journey. Because once you get to the top or once you get to your destination, you realize, man, like mm, it's there. But what like, but you will remember the process. You will and remember it's everything. It's hard to say, man. Because this is with the process, man. The process is this, man. You can work, 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 work. You could get everything that you had a desire to be. Or you can work, 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 work. And you shy short of that you wanted to receive. But you didn't receive anything, but you gained something else. So it's all about our perspective of life. Like if we just have all these materialistic things written down that we have to achieve, that we have to have possession of, and that tells us if we're successful or not, then we need to realign some things. We need to reposition some things. But man, let's be real, man. Like in this life that we go through, that we deal with, it's not always going to be happy. Up. It's not going to always be everything that we have wished desire for it to be. Like at times, man, we may get dealt that hand that we really don't want to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, hey, this is the hand that I was dealt with. What am I going to do with this hand? Yeah. Yeah. And you told me today, man, life is life is not about all the things that happen to you, man. Life is about how you're going to respond um, to all the things that have transpired in your life, man. Facts. That's, that's definitely what I would want to see change in this year. To embrace the process, but man, and to realize, man, like we may endure for a night, man, but joy is definitely. Yeah, of course, man. And and like in life is honestly a head game. Like in like in this day and age where everything is is so accessible, where we have technology, where we have all these things that are right at our fingertips that our grandparents <laughs> damn near wouldn't even have imagined. Yeah. Wait, you're on this thing and you can talk to somebody and have this and you know like like whoa yeah. like we like, we literally like have a phone on the on our finger like bro when I look at this phone sometimes I'm like bro this is like a remote control to life you can talk like you can order food ding ding or you can do this ding ding you can but like yeah. ding, like bro it's like oh like the movie click <laughs> yeah. but 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 then it's like you can have like you can have it all but like. You know, it, it's it it really is about our mental and how you know. And honestly, everybody is fighting a battle, but honestly, the biggest battle that you'll ever have is with yourself, man. Yeah. The biggest battle is with yourself because you are with you can you can, can pretend to to be somebody that you're not with like for the group or whoever. But at the end of the day, when you go home, you you you're facing with yourself. So with yourself, yo, real bro. Yeah, man. And, and, and with God, of course, everything with God. But it's just like, yeah, man, like it's, oh, man, that's so good, bro. Speak, Thank you. Um, and now I guess the, the question that we tapped in a little bit to is like, what are three things that you would tell to your younger self? Yeah. So three things, man. And I'll try to be brief with these three things, man. With my with my younger self, man. Number one is definitely to save money. Man, when I was a kid, man, and, you know, was growing up and had the chance to earn money for even grades and earn money, playing the drums at church or whatever the case is, man, I was a spender, man. When I got money, man, I had holes in my pockets, brother. I'm talking about <laughs> I got money, it was gone the next day. <laughs> and, my, and my little brother, when he got money, oh, he'll store it away. So here I am, when my money gone. Hey B, you mind if I borrow, if I borrow twenty dollars, man? <laughs> I bought myself doing that. I said, you know what? If I could change anything, if I could help my kids with anything, it's going to be to save money. That's that's definitely the first thing. The second thing that I would I would say is to know who you are at a young age, and that's kind of a part of the story, man. And I know we don't have a lot of time to get into that, and you know that's okay. We can we can always link up another time and dig yeah. in part two. But man, one other thing that I say is man, know who you are. As a kid, man, I, I used to struggle with identity a lot, man, and it and it used to put me in a lot of precarious situations. And man, and I had to. I'm gonna be brief. Put ourselves. God don't have to some of the situations. Yeah. And the devil don't. Will man? Why God? Man, this is the devil. Oh, some. Is that? 
us. Like we put ourselves <laughs> in these situations and these positions, and we like, all right, bro, like, why the hell am I in hell? Well, you need to ask yourself, why the hell are you in hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if I could teach myself one thing, man, though, for, for the three things, man, if I can teach two two of the three things, if I can teach myself, the first thing would be to save money. The second thing would be to know who I am. Know your identity, man, that when you know who you are, know that you, that you know that you know who you are, run with it. Continue to use it to your advantage. And three, man, Learn as many skills as you possibly can learn. And I was grateful for, you know, to grow up in the church and to be able to do a couple of things, man. You know, I tried to learn soundboard at one time in the church. You know, that's that deals with a lot of, you know, music engineering, things like that. I play the drums now. I sing. You know, I'm 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 able to speak even more so because I was a youth superintendent at my church, man. So man, if if I can share anything with anybody out there, man. When you learn a skill, you're very useful in a lot of ways. Right. And it, nowadays, it's about, okay, who has a skill, but not only who has a skill, who can utilize the skill the best of their ability to best of this company, whatever the case is, and who's different. Like, I'm not trying to get somebody that's the same as somebody I can just go grab off the street. Like, I want right. to see special. I, wanna, I want my attention to be there and like, okay, like, I can't take my eyes off this person because – they're grabbing my attention. They're keeping it. And they're clashing me down. I like I can't move because they're so good at what they do, man. So for the three things that I would tell myself is to one, save money. Two, know who you are. Know your identity. And the three, develop as many skills as you can potentially develop at a young age. Yeah, those are so practical too. Those are like so like this is like um, from all like the the spiritual talk and all the mental like this is like such a i love how the flow of this episode happened yeah and like this like like the practicality of that mm -hmm. yo like and that's for everyone save money you know um know who you are and then work on building skills because yep. nowadays like again i'll build your skill set build your ways like get get into like these whatever these rooms not because you're trying to earn money but mm -hmm. when you're able to build some skills some hard school like you know and again like in investing it's not about investing the dollar it's investing in these relationships it's having these having having these opportunities to continue to put your friends on if you know connect having like doing the work and building these things to build your character and then after that that not only give you an opportunity to to be exalted but as well as an opportunity to bless others 10 hundred thousand fold yeah man. because you did the work you yep. did the work with god and now you also did it in a practical way like hey and you can bring lift as you climb yeah straight up lift as you climb man you you just said something man, and i gotta write that down lift as you climb that's lift good. as you climb that's good bro that's good um and now my last question for you bro is um what do you want your legacy to be if I left this earth tomorrow, man, I would want people to know that, man, he served, he loved, and he enlightened. And those are things that a lot of times they write that down. To love, to serve, and to enlighten. And when I think about service, I think about service, man. I think about, man, how can I serve? Now, I'm not talking about, man, fire, I'm, I'm going to get going to get the fire department riding the truck over there with them trying to act like something no 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 I'm not, I'm not talking about that how can i be of service to a brother how can i continue to help take the load off of a brother or encourage a brother or uplift a brother then i think about love man how am i loving my neighbor you know we we, we always say man yeah i love him i love him and we don't act out that word which is love that action where we don't act out in the correct of what the word is defined as and love is defined as different things but i want that love that i show other people to be defined as that genuine love that he had my back love that he was there when no one else was there type of love. and he poured into me man he enlightened me on what's going on and then i think about enlightenment man I don't ever want to have or make it seem like I have the upper hand of my younger brothers and they just got to figure it out. No, I want to enlighten my brothers on things in life that go down. I want to let them know, hey, y'all, like, this is the agenda. Like, open your eyes and see what the agenda is. Because when we see what the agenda is, we ourselves 
ourselves. We go out. We go out. We're protected. When we go out into the world, out into the world God, we know that we're in the world, that we're not of the world. So when we go out, we're able to possess a type of charisma that people are so attracting. Like, man, like he has a holy boldness attached to him, man. Like he's he's some he's the salt of the earth. He's man, like he has that light that like man, he's one of those guys like walking with that charisma, walking with that boldness. So the legacy that I want to leave is for someone to know that man, I served, I loved, and I enlightened. Money is great, man. Money is good. My my life insurance will cover all of that. But for characteristics that you can continue to use each and every day, it's gonna be service, it's gonna be love, and it's gonna be light. Yeah, that's good, bro. That is so good. I actually, I actually typed that down, bro. Oh man, I, I uh, this is so good, bro. This is my last segment of the show, uh, the Speak Life, and you, bro, you know what it is, man. Yep. Straight up, BJ, I'm, 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 I am inspired. Uh, uh, I am inspired, bro, inspired by you, man, by just the humility that you have, your opportunity, like your your willingness to serve, to love and enlighten people. Man, dude, you are, you, you can walk around places, bro, and you know when people got it. Like, you got it, bro. Like, you got it. That doesn't mean you have it all together. No. But like no, you, no. like the way that you just walk in, in, in who and being so confident in how God is moving in your life, man, dude, it is just so amazing just to be like, man, it, whether in person or in, in the, or, or online or whatever, bro, it's like you're so easy to root for. You are so easy to um to just say like, man, this to mm, man. It's just such an honor, bro, to to meet, to interact, and to continue to sharpen iron with one another. Um, I'm grateful for your presence. I'm grateful for the way that you continue to lead your life more than just an athlete, man. Just like just being a great human who wants to continue to inspire, educate, and empower people, bro. And because of that, I'm honored, bro, and I'm so grateful that you've taken the time out to to just be, bless the viewers, the listeners, to bless me and anybody who's out here, man. And so thank you, bro, for, for everything that you've done. I'm proud of, I'm, I'm proud of you, not because of what you've done, but because of who you are yeah. and not a lot. And, and I noticed that whenever you tell people I'm proud, I'm so proud of you. Cause you see an Instagram post, people posting their accomplishments. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Yeah. But when do you get a chance to tell people that I'm proud of, you're proud of them for who they are? just yeah. for who they are. Yeah. And you're the type of person that is not only, I'm proud of you for who you are, but you're able to be tell other people that you're proud of them for who they are. And yeah. that in itself is being the salt and the light on earth, bro. So again, thank you for walking that out intentionally with purpose and with, um, with a tenacity that's infectious, humbling, and so tasteful, bro. Thank you, man. And I'm so, I'm rooting for you all the way, bro. And you know, bro, I'm always a call, text, whatever way. Any way possible, I got you. So thank you, bro. So much gratitude. We locked in, brother, man. I, I appreciate you, man, and your in the the spirit that the Lord gifted you with, man. The the characteristics you have of only walking the walk, man. I don't walk the walk, but walking the walk, brother, man. So I'm I'm inspired by the things you're doing, man. Like this whole setup that you got going on, man. The podcast having not only just the ability to go out and to touch. Man, but to bring people along, like brother, you you didn't have to bring me on, brother. We we could have just talked walking down, walking to the slick or something, man. But you saw something in me, man, and I I appreciate you as a brother for that, man. And it's it's nothing but love here from me to you, brother. And like you said, man, it's nothing but a text, a call away, and it's done. Yes, sir. Where can the people find you at, man? Man, that the people, man, if you all are watching, listening, whatever the case is, man, I'm on Instagram with my speaking page. It is B H A N I I Speaks S P E A K S underscore. And that's B Han, the second speaks underscore, man. And there you'll see some content. And I'm still working on building the page and you know, of course, making it be more more like to knock his page you know you, you got the signs set up and the videos and everything man so definitely still in the works but but that's that page and man it's it's unfiltered there man you know it's it's where we come to be real with each other where we come to be able to learn and like to like i said man, i'm i'm not perfect from anywhere stretch on this imagination on the world 
whatever the case is. But the only thing that I want to do is continue to share what the Lord has placed on my heart. Amen. Amen. Y'all tap in with him, man. Tap in. I'm so grateful for everyone here. I love y'all. And we are out. <laughs>